Well, the first thing I want to say is I hope you guys really enjoy um, this presentation as much as I enjoyed putting it together. We've had a lot of changes within our industry in the last five to ten years, and so putting this presentation together for you uh, really brings me back to the roots of what we do and why we do it and why we're all here at ISS. So our learning objectives today are going to be um, to identify three custom molding seeing systems that hopefully you guys are not familiar with or at least are, are being introduced to for the first time. The second one is to identify three advantages and disadvantages of custom seating as it relates to the client. And then the advantages and disadvantages <clears throat> of custom seating systems as it relates to the evaluator or technician. One of the things I want to say about this course is, um, you know, globally, coding and funding um, and cost, they're going to vary. And so I know there's going to be probably a lot of questions you guys are going to have about coding and funding and what's covered and what's not covered, but that's not going to be something we're going to have time to, to discuss today. Um, any of those types of questions you guys might have, we can address later on. The other thing is, um, Several of these manufacturers offer different types of foams, different types of fabrics, and they uh, address positioning um, differently. And that's another area of custom molded seating that we're not going to be able to get into today um, is all the different types of foams and, and fabrics that are available with each of these types of systems. <clears throat> So the overview um, of evolution with custom molded seating is that your, um, the first plaster cast type molds that were introduced were the vacuum form type. And I don't know um, how many of you in here have, are, are familiar with the old style uh, vacuum form seating. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> the um, next type of uh, foams that were, or uh, seeing systems that were introduced were the foam in place. And we're still using foam in place quite a bit today, especially with some of the, the funding changes that we've had. We're using them a lot more, at least in my area. Then digital technology came around, um, which has been, you know, wonderful in, as far as the technology of both plaster casting, or not plaster casting, but um, uh, plaster molds and then foam molds. We, you, digital technology is used in both um, types of molding systems. And then lastly, what we're seeing, which has actually been around quite a bit, yes? Turn it up. Okay, can we turn the mic up? You can hear me? Okay, yes. she asked. She asked if we turn it up, and I wasn't sure how to. Oh, I'll turn it up. Okay. I'll try to speak a little bit louder. So, um, the last type of uh, custom molded seating systems are your adjustable micromodular molds. That's a, that's a mouthful. Um, I don't know if anybody in here is familiar with the adjustable micromolds and have seen them. Anybody familiar with that term? No? Okay, so. So this is an overview of the evolution of, of custom seating. In the late 60s, Canada began to recognize the, the need for specialized seating uh, within the cerebral palsy um, population, both in Canada and the, U and the UK. In the 1970s was when we primarily used your vacuum foam, foaming plastic around plaster molds, and that, um, those types of systems were used in Canada and in the U.S. Then we got into the hand carving and plywood 
type of custom seating. And wow, okay. Hand carved and foam plywood seating, which I know a lot of you have. Is this a okay? Some of you have done custom mold seating for quite a while. Probably remember plywood and hand carving your custom molds. Your rigid and semi-rigid polyurethane foam, foams were um, being used in the U.S. primarily. And then in the 1980s, um, your vacuum forming plastic molds were continuing to improve. Foam in place was continuing to be used and foams were, um, the, the types of foams that we were using continued to improve. And then in the 1980s, adjustable modular, modular um, molds were um, further being developed through the, in the UK. In the 1990s, um, CAD CAM technology was introduced through um, the orthotics and prosthetics industry. And um, eventually, through CAD CAM experimentation, they started using um, the custom molded seating systems with the cushions for CAD CAM, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Plaster casting molds continue, uh, techniques continue to be used in the U.S. And then into the 2000s, um, and currently, we're seeing more and more of these adjustable micromodular molds. So I couldn't talk about the evolution of uh, custom molded seating without um, talking about uh, Douglas Hobson. He, uh, I, I believe he's a pioneer of the world of custom molded seating. He um, entered into the field of assistive technology in 1993 in um, Winnipeg, Canada. He was a leader in developing the assistive technology um, programs in Winnipeg and also in uh, Tennessee. He had helped establish um, RESNA in 1979 with a group of, of members, which he was actually the youngest group of the, mem of, of the members of um, the developing group of RESNA. And he also initiated and led the early um, education along with uh, Colin McLaurin and then also Elaine Teffler. Elaine Teffler was a PTN OT, and both her and Hobson really um, pioneered the whole education um, world that we know of today. So these are some great pictures that I found. And here in the late 1960s in Canada, they began to recognize, as we, I discussed earlier, they began to recognize the uh, need for individualized seating for cerebral palsy. And you'll see here, this is a corner uh, prototype, a corner seat, and an early um, positioning toilet seat for a CP child. During the late 60s and early 70s, um, they continued to advance the, um, the orthotics and prosthetics uh, vacuum forming plastics around castor molds. And so this is, a, this is an early corner seat for a child with cerebral palsy. <coughs> During the 70s, uh, the UK and Canada they started developing the matrix system, and I'm sure some of you have been doing custom molds for quite a while, probably saw some of the early, uh, the early models of matrix that was being, trying to be introduced into the U.S. The matrix system started in Canada actually as a research project because they wanted to find a way to mass produce uh, custom seating for, um, for, for body support systems. And so you'll see some of the early pictures of the matrix system. The matrix is your um, adjustable micromodular systems. In the US and Canada, um, you have various systems that were being used, your vacuum form molds, your hand carved molds, your plastic uh, mold inserts, and then of course your rigid and your, um, your semi-rigid polyfoams. <coughs> So here's some pictures that I found um, of the early foam and plywood, and then of course your custom hand-carved 
So I'm sure some, some of you in here have remember these days. I thought these pictures were really interesting. Here's an early matrix system. This, I'm not sure if this was in the US or, it, or if this was, in, I'm sorry, in the, in the UK or in Canada, but this was one of the very first prototypes of the matrix system that they were trying to develop in the orthotics and the prosthetic um, industry. And then of course our old style, you know, hand card foam. Here you have some pictures of your early rigid and semi-rigid polyfoams in your molded plastic inserts. I actually don't remember the, the molded plastic inserts. Maybe some of you do. So some of this was a real learning experience for me. In the 1980s, um, the U.S. and Canada vacuum form, again, continued to be used and continued to be improved. Research shows that the foam and place systems were actually introduced into the, the U.S. and were widely used um, in the 80s. CAD CAM technology, as I said earlier, in the orthotics and prosthetic world really opened up um, the role for us in custom molded seating and digital technology. And then the early pressure monitoring systems, which you know, we know today as pressure mapping, were being developed in the 80s as well. Uh, and the experimentation with CAD CAM technology was um, for the clients with spinal cord injury. So they were really doing a lot of experimentation with seat cushions at that time with CAD CAM. While in the UK and in Germany, um, adjustable micromolecular seating systems and the vacuum foam or vacuum foam support systems were continue to be developed and they are still today widely used. In the UK, they primarily use the adjustable micromodular systems that you guys are seeing. Um, Matrix and then also Freeform are here today. And I'm sure you guys, some of you have gone by their booth and seen some of those systems, but that is what they primarily use in the UK. The link systems, is another type of adjustable mod micromodular system uh, where there are plastic cross-shaped form sections. And um, basically, again, it's a molding system that uh, captures the shapes and can be changed at any time. It's, it's a type of system that you can fine tune, um, you can add to, take away. Again, it's another type of system where um, very similar to the matrix. And then the body burnout support system consists of a uh, vacuum support uh, bead system. It's a little bit different, but it is another type of vacuum form um, that can be um, molded to the, the individual. So here's some very interesting pictures. Um, I was not aware that back in the 80s, in the early 80s, that I actually custom molded uh, it, clients both in supine and in, uh, in prone. And so I saw these pictures and I was like, wow. I, and from what I understand, there's still some therapists and clinics here in the U.S. today that are still uh, doing custom molds in prone. Here's an early uh, vacuum, form, va vacuum form machine, and I'm not really sure what type of plastic they used um, during these days, but you can see the form, you can see the shape of the person in, in prone. <clears throat> this would be the um, end product of a vacuum form thermoplastic mold, and off to the, very, the picture very off to the right, you can see uh, what the custom mold looks like. In, this, in the middle is one of your very early um, vacuum pack or vacuum bag form seats that they used to use. The other thing, let me go back. 
I want you to remember that photo, that very last photo with the, the gentleman in his custom seat, because we're going to address that a little bit later. Here's another type of um, custom old seat that they did in the 80s. It's a beaded seat. Uh, again, this, is a, this was new to me when I was putting this presentation together. Um, I don't know if maybe some of you remember these types of of custom molded seats. <clears throat> In the 80s, Contour U um, was developed, and one of the things, not only did they um, start vacuum forming both the molds and, um, or the foam and the plastics, but they also started vacuum foaming or forming the, uh, the vinyl, which covered the foam. So you can see in the blue is actually a vacuum form type of vinyl, which we still use today. Here's an early foam and play system. And I thought this was really interesting because you can see look, it looks like they're actually pushing the, the form, the, the mold um, through the back of the wheelchair. Whereas now we pour it into a bag when we do a foam in place. Here's an early um, generation one matrix system. Um, and we'll talk more about this later, but matrix is, has gone through three generations. The third generation, which is what we're using now um, in the UK and both here in the United States. But this is the first um, generation of the matrix system. Oops, wrong way. The link system is, is, again, another type of adjustable micromodular system that they use over in the UK. And currently, um, they, they've done some some changes to it where they can add uh, positioning devices to it. Um, so through the years, they, they've continued to improve the link system. The link system is currently not available in the United States, um, but I thought it was you know, worth you guys seeing this because it is a different type of micromodular seating system. <clears throat> the Burnett body support, it's, it's a type of uh, custom foam uh, system, very comfy. I mean, they, they really focus on comfort with their custom molds. And then we get into the 1990s. We merged into CAD CAM uh, digital technology, and this is one of the very first or early um, computer uh, carvers where uh, that's a seat cushion that they're they're carving from a digital uh, CAD CAM program. Adjustable modular, modular systems continued again continue to be improved both in the UK and in the 90s they reintroduced um, they tried to bring the matrix system and other adjustable micromodular systems into the United States, but it's such a different, um, it's a different look, it's, it's, uh, it's a different type of methodology that they use and how they actually position and custom mold uh, clients in the UK. So it, it's taking quite a while for us in the United States to accept systems like uh, like the matrix and like the links and all these other systems that you're seeing with like freeform that's here. One of the other things we started doing in the 1990s is we started figuring out, hey, well, we can actually do combination mold or combination foams and cushions. And, um, and then plaster casting techniques continued to be used. And we never really stopped using plaster casting molds. We still continue to use them today. <clears throat> so here's an example of a CAD CAM technology. Uh, I'm not sure how many people in here use 
digital technology with custom molds. Yeah. So you've got your OBSS is one type, and then you have your uh, the Invacare Scribbler, and they're here today as well. If some of you have been by their booth and seen the Scribbler. In the U.S. and the U.K., and also in Germany, um, CAD-CAM technology, again, being used both for your custom foams and for your plastic molds. Autobach has um, what they call their ortho shape, and what they started using is your ABS, your high-temperature thermoplastics, uh, that are vacuum formed to replicate the image. I don't really, at least in my region, I don't really see um, ABS thermoplastic molds being used. I don't know if anybody in here has seen them and used them. Yes? Yeah. <clears throat> and this is showing, you know, currently, you know, we are still using uh, plaster cast molds. Rye Designs, their shape, uh, cap shape capture is a perfect example of, of us still using our plaster cast molds. Here's your generation two matrix system. And, um, you know, those of you that are not familiar with the matrix might not see the differences between generation in, uh, one and generation two. But here is a client um, from over in the UK who is uh, positioned in a matrix system uh, generation two. Foam car uh, is another type of custom mold manufacturer in the UK. Their system is a little bit different where um, you actually have the digital pen and you've got the foam machine and the block right there. And as you are actually going over the mold that you just did, the, f the carving is occurring right next, you, you actually get to see it side by side. So it's a pretty cool process. Um, I would love to see them come into the, the United States. And I had to throw this in here. I actually, I went on Amazon.com and I was looking for seating and positioning, uh, you know, like old textbooks. And I actually have an old rehabilita rehabilitation engineering uh, textbook from 1990 that has Hobson's uh, chapter in it that shows the 90, 90, 90 and all the, all the initial theories of, of seating and positioning and custom seating. And I came across this, and look how much that book, to, I mean, this is just a couple of days ago, and that book is going for $762. Can you believe that? It's crazy. <laughs> so 14 years of advancements. I just want to sit properly, okay? That's all of us. So emerging into the year 2000 and currently, okay, 14 years of advancements. Uh, previous interventions, you know, just continue to improve with um, improvements in technology. We still, like as I said before, we still use plaster casting around uh, vacuum form ABS thermal uh, plastics and foam and bead molds. Your digitize and your machine carver Hard foams and plastics are still being used today. Your foam in place, again, we're still using those, especially now more and more with um, you know, limited time that we have to do the molds with our funding, um, you know, limitations in our funding. We're still using those widely. And now with the adjustable micromodular seating, I really hope, you know, that for those of you who have not seen the adjustable micromodular seating systems that you will um, take a look at those, you know, while they're here. So your adjustable micromodular systems um, continue to improve. You now matrix, since now they're in their third generation, 
They are now um, in the United States, and the system is actually called the Matrix Easy Fit. The third generation evolved because they um, really started focusing on postural correction and the pressure relieving uh, shear cover that they call the surface modules. Uh, they allow for airflow, they allow for reduction in heat and moisture, and so because they allow these, um, these things to occur, they started finding out that you can actually achieve correction with postures that you, that, you know, we look at them and say, well, they're fixed. We need to accommodate. Well, now we're really looking at, okay, well, can we really uh, correct a posture rather than accommodate a posture? With the um, surface modules, they allow for such infinite um, and incremental shape changes that when you want to do a correction, you can do it just in little small increments of, of time, okay? You don't have to do a whole new mold when you want to correct somebody and then go, oh my gosh, well maybe that was too much. We, went, we were a little too aggressive with the correction. Well, with, with the adjustable micromodular systems, you can actually perform smaller corrections so that clients can actually tolerate them over time. And here's an example of um, a not, what I would consider a non-complex versus a complex um, type of correction system. Here's your free form seating, and if you guys have been by the booth, you, you've seen um, this system. It is, they don't offer it in a seat cushion, they just offer the back system right now. But they do offer different types of covers, um, different types of foams, and um, from what I understand, I don't think they're gonna be available in the United States until next month, March or April. Yeah, so they're not quite, quite uh, available here yet, but soon. And this is another type of adjustable micromodular system. Okay. So here's the links that I was talking about earlier, the link system that they use over in the UK. They've advanced um, their product to where now they're offering uh, lateral supports, different types of accessories, um, like your lateral supports, your hip guides. The only thing about the links is that right now they're not available in the United States. Vacuum form seating is a company in Germany. They, um, they use beads. Um, rather than foam, so it's a vacuum packed bead type of system. And um, they do quite a bit of correction with their, with their molds. So we've gone through, you know, the evolution of the years of, of, of how we've evolved when custom seating and now and the different types of systems. So now what I want to do is talk about some of the advantages and disadvantages of the different types of systems. So your plaster casting um, around your vacuum form thermoplastics and, and your bead molds. The technique is um, it's either ABS, some type of thermoplastics um, are used to replicate a negative uh, shape mold, plaster mold. And this is just a picture of showing um, somebody being molded in either a, a beaded system or you know some kind of vacuum vacuum bag. So your pros. So what are your pros to to your plaster casting? For your clients, um, it's going to be the ease of use for your hypotonic clients. 
um, your mild to moderate spinal cord patients and your orthopedic deformities. With these types of molds, you're able to capture the severe deformities such as your rent pumps, um, your severe scoliosis, and your, your pretty um, severe lordosis. However, um, with the ABS thermoplastic molds, you have uh, your lower profile and they're lower, um, they're lighter in weight. To the evaluator, <clears throat> Capturing the client's uh, shape, you know, can be very relatively quick because you're doing, you know, a quick vacuum uh, mold. Your materials are going to be a little bit more lo low cost, and it's, you're using, you know, more simple methodologies. So some of the cons to the uh, vacuum form machines is that they may be loud. So some of your clients that have high tone, they have cognitive impairments or maybe, or maybe some, some sensory impairments, might not be able to tolerate the loud machines um, that are used. Your clients with profound physical and mental disabilities, um, some of them with mixed um, tone issues, maybe your starter reflex might be a little bit more challenging to mold. And then um, the foams of the mold of these types of molds are relatively bulky. So if you're looking for something a little more profile, you, you might want to try a different type of system. To the evaluator um, or to the technician, your process of fabricating a plaster mold uh, may be a little more time consuming. The manufacturing time might be a little bit longer than some of the other types of systems. And of course, with plaster casting, you get into some messiness. So, um, and the one thing that, that is different with, you know, the mold that we've typically used versus the adjustable micromodular molds is that you can't see through the mold. You're molding them, but you can't see actually what is going on, what's being filled in as far as your spinal deformities, your lordosis, your you know, what's actually being supported them until you actually get them out of the mold. And then we go into the foam in place. And here you can see a picture of Mary and I uh, doing a foam in place with a CP client. So your foam in places, they use, um, uh, it's a liquid foam and various chemicals that are mixed and um, the foaming reaction cre you know, is created and it, it's produced in a very short period of time. I don't know how many people here like foam in places or use them quite often. Yeah? Okay. So your pros to, uh, to your foam in places, they're relatively quick. I mean, you basically can get in there, do the mold, and you're done. I mean, it's, it's a fairly quick set. The foam has the ability to fill in those concave uh, spinal curves and some of the asymmetries. And you can capture, you know, with, with the foam mold, you can capture some pretty severe scoliosis and ribs, humps, lordosis, and so forth. To the evaluator um, and the technician, and especially for me, if we have limited time, a foam in place is, you know, it's a fast production time. We could pretty much do everything right there on site. You have minimal technician time, and um, like I was saying, it's, it's on the spot. You can do it right there and be done with the mold within a very short period of time. And for us, for clinicians, it can reduce our number of visits you know, significantly because you can do everything right there on the spot. So you don't have to do a second, you know, a first fit, maybe a second fit. And um, so when you don't have, uh, you're seeing patients that have limited insurance and you, they only give you one to two visits, maybe three visits that they approve you for, um, this might be the type of system you might want to look into doing. 
So your cons, I mean, there are some, some things you've got to think about with foam in place. One is because that foaming action is occurring, you've got heat that's, that's being produced. And some of CP clients are not going to be able to tolerate that, that heat um, that's generated from that foaming action. Patients with uh, you know, high agitation, um, ones that move around a lot, ones that um, just have continuous body movement, those are one, gonna be ones that might be a little more difficult to mold with a, um, with a custom mold, with a foam in place. And then the other thing is some inconsistencies can occur with, with the, um, the foam itself. To the evaluator, uh, errors can occur because it does, the process does happen so quickly. If you don't have the right set of hands and you, you know, the, if the patient's moving around a lot, you can have errors in, in the mold because it hardens so quickly. And so then you're stuck with a mold that you can't use, basically you've got to throw away and start it all over again. And the ability to change the seating system once it's hardened, once it's set in, I mean, you've got a carver, you can carve, um, but it is limited to what you can do after the mold is complete. And then the process um, of actually molding might take more hands than, uh, than what you have available. So usually when we do a foam in place mold, it's usually myself, the ATP, and then we have a third set of hands. Now, you know, with what I said, as far as you might have somebody with some high tone that have um, agitation or a lot of behaviors, it's not impossible to use a foam in place. I mean, if you have a, a funding source that's very limited and, and this is a type of system that you need to use, it is possible to have a successful mold with a foam in place. This is one um, that my ATP and I did just a couple of weeks ago. And so you can see the before picture, um, the during and the after. So, and we've done these molds, you know, so many times, we've become pretty proficient at doing them. So now getting into your digitized um, or machine car foams. Basically, um, most of you probably know this, is that you have the vacuum bag. Um, that you create the mold, and then you have a uh, stylus that actually digitizes the mold depending on which digitizing system you're using. Um, what, that, what happens there is within the program, it creates a 3D image, and then it goes to an actual computer that um, carves out, um, carves out the, the, the mold for you based on the digital um, the digital uh, mold that you've created. So here's a picture again of Mary and I. Um, we do quite a bit of molds together, especially in group homes. And here is an example of an OBSS system where we um, used the bags, molded them, and then on the right we're digitizing um, the system. So what are your, some of your pros for um, CAD-CAM digitizing technology? There's no discomfort to the patient. I mean, the one thing you need to think about is, you know, if they're allergic to latex, you might have to get the latex-free bags. Um, other than that, there's really no discomfort to the client. Um, you have a wide range of patient populations you can mold with um, these types of systems. And again, with your thermoplastics, with your ABS thermoplastic molds, they are um, going to be lower in profile and then light, lighter in weight. The pros to the evaluator and the technician is that the digitizing system is fairly quick. Once we get them in the mold, we have their shape, and basically we take the digitizing pen and the system of, or the process of actually going through and creating the digitizing image within the software is fairly quick. Your manufacturing um, time is decreased because you have less materials. Basically, once you have 
the 3D image, you email it off to the manufacturer, goes right into the, the huge machine, and it creates the carve, and it's done pretty quickly. The other thing that's great about the CAD CAM digitizing technology is that once you have your 3D image, you can make changes within the software. So let's say you digitized um, a seat cushion that was too deep. Well, you just go right into the system and you can reduce that seat depth. You can add soft spots. Um, there's all kinds of things you can do within the software prior to it going to the manufacturing, um, the manufacturer for, for processing. There's no messy chemicals um, that you have to worry about. And it can increase your efficiency, um, and it's very versatile. The other thing is there, it reduces your unforeseen um, environmental uh, risks. So you're not dealing with chemicals. So the cons. Um, just like with your vacuum form uh, foam molds, they can be very, uh, they could be bulky. Um, so if you're looking for that low, lower profile, you might want to try to choose a, another type of system. The thermoplastics, to me, they would be, if you've got somebody that's got some pretty deep concave um, curves, it might be more difficult to capture those with a thermoplastic ABS type system. To the evaluator, um, the ability to change the seating system once it's, once it's done. So once you get it back from the manufacturer and you have your mold, again, you're gonna have some limitations with what you can, you can do change-wise. Um, you might have to do a second, you know, a second mold with them. The methods of digitizing um, the, uh, for digitizing in the computer, or computer generated changes, they need to be accurate. So, you know, some people are more tech savvy than others. So if you're not comfortable using the system and, and, and using the software, it, you know, you can make mistakes that um, are gonna be costly. So you need to know the software, you need to know how to go into the software and then make the changes that you need to make before sending it off to manufacturing. <clears throat> And then lastly, of course, as I've said with the other ones, you can't see through the mold. Here's one of my long-term CP uh, clients. We did her, we did this mold with OBSS a year ago. And so that's, this is what she looked like when we first walked into the group home. We molded her, she looks wonderful. We got her the final fit, and she's really severely kyphotic, and she's got some really severe posterior pelvic tilt. I mean, mid-thoracic and upper thoracic, she's really kyphotic. So that's why she looks like she's really sitting back in that seating system. Now, if I said that every mold that I did was perfect, I would be lying because that's, I mean, that's just the, the nature of custom mold. You're not perfect. So I can tell you two days ago, I got an email and some pictures from the nurse of the group home. And this is what I got. So and this mold's only a year old. So she has put on weight and she's, she's had some changes, obviously, but it's the same mold. I mean, that's, that was a year ago, and this was just a couple of days ago. So we're going back to the drawing board with her, and we're actually thinking about using the matrix, um, the adjustable micromodular system with her, because we just don't know if, if another mold is gonna work for her, so. Can I ask a question? Sure. Is she, it's, yeah, she's so kyphotic and it comes forward. I mean, her head comes forward so much. The, it, it, half of it is the caregivers. 
when you, when you have a group home. And that's something else you have to consider is the environment that these clients live in and the type of caregivers that they have. I mean, we went through multiple training um, visits with the caregivers in, in the group home, and they just were not willing to put the headrest on the way it was supposed to to be put on. And so that is another challenge that we have with her, is how we're going to position her head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, again, that's another, and she's, that's a divided leg sling. I mean, we, we've taught them how to take out the sling, put the sling up underneath her. Um, we've done multiple, like I said, a lot of education with the, with the staff and the caregivers and the group home. And yeah, it's, it's another one of those issues. Well, we followed up with them um, about three weeks after, and everything was great. And they weren't using the chucks, and they weren't using, they weren't keeping the sling up underneath her. And of course, you know, over time you have change in staff. So we don't know there's a change in staff in that group home, so we didn't have the opportunity to go back in and do re-education. So your adjustable micromodular systems Basically, what it is, is a, it's a sheet of um, interlocking segments. And when you start out, of course, you take the measurements and you have the sheet of, of um, these interlocking um, segments. And you basically mold, you, you take the sheet and you mold, you can either mold it around the, the client themselves, or if you want to use a plaster mold, or even a foam, um, not a foam, but a, a beanbag mold, Either one, but how that works is you take the whole segment, you mold it, um, and then you can take away segments or add segments. And um, <clears throat> during the time that you're actually creating the mold, you have such, like I was saying before, you have such increment, incremental and small adjustments that you can make um, to achieve the posture that you want. And just like I said, the process, the, the molding process can actually occur directly um, to, you know, the fitting can be directly to the client, the mold and the fit all in one. Um, or you can, you can do the mold around a plaster cast mold. So, you know, we talk about fixed versus flexible postures. We talk about accommodation uh, versus corrective seating, okay? And thinking outside the box, you know, with these adjustable micromodular systems, what if the majority of what we thought was fixed postures are not actually fixed? What if we have the ability to actually correct a posture that we previously didn't think could be corrected? Here's an example. Um, this is just another, this is matrix. Um, and then this is the links um, system. So with your adjustable micromodular systems, the primary difference between these and the ones we've previously used over the years are that you have more ability to do corrective posture, uh, positioning. Um, Increase, you have increased circulation, you um, have more dynamic and shock absorption because they, within these components, they actually have different segments that are a little more flexible. So it's not just one type of segment, you know, made out of one type of material. They actually have different types of um, more flexible types of um, segments that can be added into where you want that more flexibility. And it's hard to, to explain that to you until you actually see it. That's why I want to encourage you guys to go by the booth. Um, 
you have less transfers during the modification process. So it's not mold them, get out, take them out of it, let's look at it, well, no, let's get them back in it. You know, you don't have that back and forth transfer system. Basically, the person's in the mold and you can actually make all the changes right there with them, with them in the mold. And you can actually see what you're doing. Um, you can actually see through the mold and make those micro you know, those um, fine tune adjustments to the seating system. And then it is slim in profile, so it's a lower profile system. So when, when you put somebody in these micromodular molds, you don't see the big bulkiness around them, okay? You actually see the person and you barely even see the mold, to be honest with you. The pros to the evaluator or to the technicians is that it is easy to adjust. You can, you can grow it, you can take away from it. Um, so that's, that's one of the big, um, the big advantages to, to this system. And again, as I said, you can see through the design. So um, you can see where, um, you know, where you want to make those fine-tune uh, adjustments. And again, they allow for moisture and heat retention, and they reduce the risks of pressure sores and skin breakdown. And because of this, your shape adjustments can be done, again, um, with the client in it, and you get instantaneous feedback from the, from the patient. So you don't have to take them out of a foam mold, make the adjustments, put them back into a foam mold, and say, okay, sit here for 30 minutes, and then let's see how you feel. You can actually make those adjustments right there with them in the mold, and they can tell you and give you the feedback, so it's, so it's instantaneous. Your cons to these systems, um, weight can be an issue. Um, they are a little bit heavier. Now with the free form, the free form is, is made out of a material that's fairly lightweight. So if any of you have already been by that booth and looked at that, they are a little bit lighter weight. However, they're, they only offer that in the back. They don't offer it in, in a seat cushion. <clears throat> And your choice of component colors might be lim limited. So aesthetic-wise, they, they, might, they might not like it. Some of them think it's really cool looking, and some of them, they don't like the way it looks. So they want the whole thing covered. Your cons to the technician is um, time in the direct fitting can be, um, can be a disadvantage. And because you have such infinite adjustability in these systems. Anybody in here that is OCD and you want everything actually so perfect, you, you might be spending hours and hours on that, you know, sitting there making those micro, very small adjustments to the seating system. And then technical and uh, clinical knowledge may be more extensive because you are dealing with a system that has a lot more adjustability in it. So. Um, your knowledge, you know, might be, have to be a little bit more extensive as far as, especially when you're correcting somebody's posture. So here's this picture again, um, and this is pretty ironic because when we were putting this presentation together, this is the gentleman from back in the 70s, okay, and if you look at his posture, and on the right you see a sheet, like I was explaining earlier, you see a sheet of the matrix, and it it's, would actually be perfect for him. I mean, as far as where his uh, postures are, how he's posturing, the difference is, is that with the thermoplastic mold, you could only do so much correction. But with the matrix, we could start out with, um, you know, a mold with him and then eventually maybe bring him up into a more of a sitting position, okay? Again, it it's, it's, takes time, it's a very slow process, but again, you can do corrective positioning with the adjustable micromodular systems. So again, I mean, I challenge you guys to really think about and think outside the box. 
of, you know, not just not going straight to, okay, when I'm evaluating this patient, they got fixed deformities, let's, you know, put, let's just accommodate what they have. Let's really think about, okay, can we actually do some correction in posture with, with these clients? And here's some examples. Um, these are clients over in the UK. And if you look at the before picture, you can see where her rib cage is actually digging into um, her pelvis. And then after some time of correction, you can see the gap, how it's opened up there. So this is a great example of how you can do corrective uh, positioning. Here's a gentleman that sort of looks like this guy, okay? So here we have this gentleman here, and how many people see clients lying in bed that look like this, right? Okay, and what do you want to do with them? What, I mean, how do you, you think, okay, I'm gonna do a gurney type of wheelchair for them because they can't sit up. Um, Here's this same gentleman. So slow, okay, slow process, but eventually they got him up into a chair. And of course, and you can see he's pretty, you know, he's pretty uh, reclined, um, pretty, you know, extensive, and he's got the posturing going on. But then look at the after picture. I'm sorry. I can't hear you. The, the time, what time? Oh, is it, is it the same? I'm sorry. One day, no, huh? no, 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 it's not one day. This is over a period of time. It's a very slow process when you talk about correcting somebody's... Um, um, on this particular, yes, yes, yes. Here's another example. Um, you can see he's just so twisted. You can see that rib cage is pretty much all the way around. And then the after picture. Um, these were pretty, pretty well fixed to begin with. And they just slowly. Right. Yeah, yes. Um, I honestly don't know the length of time, um, but it was, I know it was pretty significant amount of time that, I mean, I'm not talking in a couple of months, I'm talking maybe a year's time. And again, I think that's going to depend on how much tone you're talking about. I mean, how much, how, you know, how spastic are they? You know, how, how long the deformity has been there? I, and, you know, I think there's a lot of variables there that you have to think about um, when it comes to time and correcting posture. And, and that brings up another good point is that these systems can be used in re rehab settings where you're actually doing ongoing treatment to correct the posture. So clinically, you know, and, and for clinicians, for PTs and OTs working in a clinic, you have somebody, or even in a long-term care facility, you can use these as treatment, um, uh, treatment techniques to actually improve, improve their posture and um, improve their ability to engage in their, in their daily activities. Here's some references um, that I um, uh, have gotten for you guys, you know, as far as um, the presentation. Okay, and then questions. Oh, where are we on time? About what? Ten, ten, fifteen minutes? Okay, okay. Yes. Going between the laterals, do you always do that? 
matrix, and we didn't get into that for this particular presentation because I knew we wouldn't have time, but um, what they use is what they call an open door technique. So when they position, when they create their mold, they actually have a, a flexible part of the system that comes around and supports them. And, it, and it's done, you know, between, uh, depending on the type of deformity, whether it's a, a rotation deformity or what, um, but they have a, a method to where they support the body and support the deformities in a certain way through what they call an open door technique. So if you guys want more information and training um, in, that, in these methodologies with the matrix system and some of these other adjustable micromodular systems, then I can definitely point you in that direction. You were showing the other photo earlier on with the person that changed so much. I had a facility that in six months to a year, I'd find these molds were no longer fitting. So I started digging into it and found out that they would only sit in the chair about an hour a day. They'd put them either in bed or a bean bag. Uh -huh. I said, once I found that, it's like, we're wasting our time here, folks. This is a, a brace. So if you run into that, make sure that they're using it properly and not an hour a day and putting them in a bean bag the rest of the day. Yeah, that's that is true. And you know, if you're if you're doing a corrective type of uh, seating system, they may not tolerate it more than an hour. Um, that's something else to, to think about too. So it depends on what your your overall um, outcome. You know, what what outcome do you want with that particular client? But yeah, I mean, you know, we we develop these nice custom molded systems and they only spend an hour a day in them well and then what happens then they they're in bed and totally sort of undo, undoes what you already created to try to correct this posture so and that brings up a whole nother um, a whole other issue where um, you've got to look at the positioning in the bed as well and postural care is now again and that's another um, another treatment technique that we're starting to look at as far as the positioning in, in their bed as well as in their wheelchair. Um, Tamara Kittleson is an OT and she does a lot of postural care uh, systems. So I don't know if you're familiar with that. No? Okay. We can get you information on that too. Oh, there, okay. Is that Tamara's? Tamara. So Tamara Kittleson is doing one of postural care tomorrow. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And yeah. And then again, are they at home? Are they in a are they in a group home? Are they in a facility? Yeah. You've got all those those variables. Now that particular gentleman that you this, that you saw, um, I didn't put the picture in here, but I have a picture from three years later um, to these pictures, and he is his posture is even it's improved even more so. I mean, he's actually up. He's alert. I mean, he looks awesome in the chair. But yeah, I mean, you're talking one plus years of postural correction. Yeah. Hello. Uh, yes. I just wanted to ask you about um, once we when we deliver these um, or we see them in clinic, they look very they look very nice. I'm no. sorry, I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Um, when we deliver these or when we see them in clinic, they look very nice. Everybody's um, setting up straight. Uh -huh. um, and then within minutes of leaving, what we find is they're calling to ask, you know, how does, how does the winter coat, how does this functionally work in my life, you know? Um, and specifically with a winter coat, uh, is there a way to accommodate for that? Yes, there is. Um, again, because these systems are, you can, 
you can adjust them with right there in the chair. If they're, and it may be, you know, during the winter times, you want to go ahead and just loosen those segments up and open it up for, um, for, for the coats. Um, but then again, you're not, you're not keeping capturing of the, uh, of the mold itself. Um, I have to get back with you on that as far as how we're dealing with, with... I have a suggestion for that. In our school, we have a lot of students that use a product that is um, a hoodie made out of different types of fleece um, that you just put over their head and it goes around their wheelchair. So you don't... Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I'm only, I can only hear half of... I'm so good. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. There's a product products out there. Uh, sir, what did you... A, it's like a Snuggie. Okay. It's similar to a Snuggie. It's a hooded thing that is made out of fleece that you don over the student's head and it flows out like a blanket around their chair and fits to their chair. And you can get it made to different specifications for the chair size, the student size. Uh, and our students use that a lot. Okay. In our school. Okay. Thank you. Uh, let me ask you. A question about the working with this type of a matrix. When you do the moldings and you uh, send it out, the molds come back for you and uh, you have a nice cover for it. So when you pr bring the chair in, the, the therapist and everybody looks at it, there's a nice cover on this. On this type of matrix, since you do it on the spot and the mold is done or the fitting is done at that moment, you cannot, uh, uh, how do you resolve the problem of having a cover that will be a nice fitting or a proper design for it? Because Chances are you may have to add some more links to one side than to the other, so you can't have really a symmetric cover to have a nice finishing to it. How do you work that out? Okay, so you're you're asking me about the covers, yeah. Statics, yes. Yeah, yes. They can, they will make custom. They, there's different types of uh, different types of foams, different types of covers, and they will actually make custom covers for you. Um, have you been by the booth? Okay, and did you talk with them about about their custom covers and what's that? Oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, hi, uh, I was wondering if you have seen a move toward the use of a body jacket or TLSO in combination with maybe a less aggressive seating system to try to accommodate postural deformities so when they're in the chair, out of the chair, because of the need to wrap around further than what some custom molded systems will allow. I have not. No, I have not seen the use of TLSOs. Um, no. What's the cost comparison between, I know what foam in place costs typically, but between like the Autobox or another similar um, CAD program uh, shape system and the micro uh, modular systems? I didn't catch all of that. I'm How much does it cost oh, versus cost. the other ones? It is, it's, it is comparable. And the other thing is that the matrix is FDA approved um, and, and it is coded. So, um, and, but the cost is comparable to the other, yeah. And that's the other thing that they've worked on over the years um, with, you know, continually trying to reintroduce it to the United States is that they've made it um, competitive with the other molding systems and it is coded. There, um, I don't know, is anybody here from Texas? Yeah, there, Texas is using Matrix quite a bit from what I understand. It's one of the states that's using it. Um, a lot. So, no? No other questions? Yeah. Right. Um, it, it will mount to any frame. It, it power manual frames. Um, yes. Caged him? Oh, from the, are you talking about the, the plastic mold versus going to the? Yes. 
Well, you know, if, it's a, if you're talking about a manual, um, adult manual, you know, you could do tilt and recline system, so you wouldn't have to change out the frame. Yes, yes. So what you could do is you get a, a, a manual tilt and recline chair where initially she's, you know, the, the client's laid out and then eventually just kind of slowly start doing that corrective. And you can lock out, um, you can lock out the tilt, lock out the recline. No, anybody else? All right. Well, very good. Well, I hope, uh, hope you guys enjoyed, enjoyed the lecture.